So you can sit for just a moment. So it is a great pleasure to see you all here. And welcome to those who are coming from our Latin brothers and sisters. Bishop Gregory wanted the churches to remain open in the eparchy. Of course, no one has an obligation to come because of the crisis. So the obligation is no longer there. But the churches he wanted open to people to understand that God has not closed his doors and that for those who wish could have access to the divine altar. And of course, I'm in total agreement with this. And so you will know if the church will be closed if there is a decree of total lockdown by law in the state of Maine. If that doesn't happen, I live here. So the, the same schedule will follow for the masses, on, well, forever, just keep going. The only thing that we are canceling are all the social events. So there's no muffins or coffees after mass. There'll be no festivities on Shanini, on Hosanna Sunday, Palm Sunday following the mass. There'll be no parish council meeting in April. But other than that, we continue on with all the ceremonies, including Holy Week, even the ceremonies that are not distinctly masses. And as we explained to you last week, the only thing that we will actually change for the liturgy is the sign of peace. And as we mentioned last week, both all of the masses of the Catholic Church, the sign of the peace for the Latins, for the Syriacs, for the Byzantines, the whole sign of peace is meant to be the flow from the divine altar amongst us person to person. It's not a meet and greet. It's not a 4th of July picnic. It is something that is done with a great ritual form to it, which is normally that when the servers come down, they will come to the end of the pew. Normally, as you know, they would bow and say, peace be with you. And the person receiving that peace from our Lord would place their hands on the outside of their hands and in pulling back say, and with your spirit. Then that person would turn to the next person and do likewise, peace be with you, the other person, and with your spirit. So it passes person to person in the row. So the only thing that we're actually going to change is that you don't have to have any physical contact, but that the peace of Christ still flows from this divine altar in the mysteries and liturgically at the beginning of the anaphora, we will continue to do. So the boys will come down as usual. They'll come to the ends of your pews. They will just simply bow and say, peace be with you. You bow to them at the same time and respond by saying, and with your spirit. Turn to the person next to you. No one has to have any touch or any contact that way. You also have hand purifiers at the entrance of each of the churches if you also wish to take advantage of that. And the last thing is to say, you are all profoundly welcome here. The Syriac church is not an ethnic enclave. Any more than to be a Latin Catholic means you have to be an Italian. So the Syriac church at one point stretched everywhere from the Eastern Mediterranean Sea all the way out to Beijing, China, through Central Asia, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, all the rest of it, and all the way down through India, which is why to this day, the ancient churches in southwestern India are Syriac. This is not an ethnic club, it is not an ethnic church, and you are always welcome to be here, especially being our brothers and sisters in the one single church of Christ. So, we will now begin, please stand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. 
Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, you carry the sins of the world, and you forgave the sins of the paralytic. You cured him and had him carry his mat in front of the crowd. Make us worthy to meditate on your amazing miracles and strengthen us with the power of your forgiveness. May we share in the grace of your redemption to glorify and thank you, your Father and your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the Father who wished us to share in the mystery of his love. And to the Son who came into this world to heal suffering humanity with the palm of his grace. And to the Holy Spirit who dropped down the dew of his consolation upon all broken hearts. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. O Christ, the only begotten Son of the Word of the Father, you came down to us in your mercy and in your compassion. You chose to show the extent of our, your affection and love by telling the paralytic to take up his mat and to walk in the sight of all the crowd, that all might believe in your divinity. You restored joy to the suffering paralytic, and you forgave his sins. We thank and praise you for the great gift that you have given to your holy church, in your name she absolves sins, and she forgives those who repent. Now, O Christ our God, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to extend your mighty hand upon us. Come to us with the power of your forgiveness. Confirm our faith in you and implant in us the memory of your divine miracles and all of your teachings. We glorify and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Jesus Christ, our Lord, you are the promise of true life, the heavenly physician and the harbor of rest and salvation. Accept our incense and fill us with your divine knowledge. Extend your mighty hand to cure the sick and suffering among us and heal us with the balm of your forgiveness. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
Kadishat, Aloho Kadishat, Hayal Tano Kadishat, Lama Yuto, In the church dwells the Spirit flowing from the heart of Christ. Now we ask you, O Savior, pardon us and grant us peace. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and to children forever. Brothers and sisters, some people's sins are public, preceding them to judgment, but other people are followed by their sins. Similarly, good works are also public, and even those that are not cannot remain hidden. Those who are under the yoke of slavery must regard their masters as worthy of full respect, so that the name of God and our teaching may not suffer abuse. Those whose masters are believers must not take advantage of them because they are brothers, but must give better service because those who will profit from their work are believers and are beloved. Teach and urge these things. Whoever teaches something different and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the religious teaching is conceited, understanding nothing, and has a morbid disposition for arguments and verbal disputes. From these come envy, rivalry, insults, evil suspicions, and mutual friction among people with corrupted minds who are deprived of the truth supposing religion to be a means of gain. Praise be to God always. Your sins are forgiven. Stand up and take your mat and walk. to the praise, glory, and honor of the Most Holy Trinity. And during this instant, Kyrie 
Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Saviour, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark, who proclaim life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Mark writes, When Jesus had returned to Capernaum, after some days, it became known that he was at home. Many gathered together so that there was no longer room for them, not even around the door. And he preached the word to them. They came bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And unable to get near to Jesus because of the crowd, they opened up the roof above him. And after it, they had broken through. They let down the mat on the paralytic, on which the paralytic was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, My son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there and asking themselves, Why does this man speak in this manner? He is blaspheming. Who but God alone can forgive sins? Jesus immediately knew in his mind what they were thinking within themselves. And so he said, Why do you think such things within your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise, take up your mat, and walk. But so that you may know, that the Son of Man does have authority to forgive sins on earth. And then he said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, take up your mat, and go home. He arose and he picked up his mat at once, and he went away in the sight of everyone. And they were all astounded and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. Forgive me us his words of life. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ. My son, your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Of course, God always has a wonderful sense of humor. He is the origin of the order of the universe. Humor to us as human beings is when something that we think is going to follow doesn't happen. That's the simple definition of humor. You tell a joke, and there's a punchline. Something happens that's unexpected, and we laugh. So God is the order of all that creation. So simultaneously, while he gives the entire planet pause to reflect about their lives, he gives us one of the most glorious springs that I have seen, at least in the last three years that I have been in Maine. This is beautiful. In fact, that's probably part of the difficulty. Everyone keeps going out and going around because it's just lovely. And of course, Lent is always about healing. The great fast is a time for strengthening because the strengthening is meant that we go within ourselves to find out which parts are not whole. In fact, sometimes if you read the older translations of the scriptures, our Lord will say to the individuals, your faith has made you whole. 
Because, of course, what is health except for the well-functioning of all systems within a person, within an environment, within a climate, climate, whatever? It's that all the systems actually function together. Now, of course, what we're doing in Lent for the first three weeks is we're supposed to be looking at our lives to understand what is actually loose. What parts are actually missing in my life that I should be finding to turn around, to heal? Which is why the first three weeks of Lent, which we've just passed, has been on the interior examination of conscience. These two weeks, this past week and this week coming up, we focus upon our Lord's miracles of healing people, historically, the paralytic. And if you recall, this healing in the Gospel of St. Mark today is sandwiched in between the healing of the leper that we had at the beginning of the great fast and the calling of the Apostle Matthew, which follows after this healing of the paralytic. So if we notice the sequence in the gospel, it's very clear. First, we have the man who's healed with leprosy. That's a skin. As far as the people in the classical world are concerned, they're not worried about nerve endings or anything else. They're worried about, you see the surface. It's a skin disease. It's a skin ailment. When we come to the paralytic, when our Lord sees him, yes, physically he's paralyzed, but our Lord isn't talking about the outside of this man. He's impressed by the men who have just torn apart Simon's roof of his house to let a full-grown man down inside. And we're told that our Lord, because he's impressed by these men, he says to him, my son, your sins are forgiven you. And of course, it reminds us of St. Thomas Aquinas, whose entire writing on theology, the basic principle is, everything finds its origin in the divinity and everything returns to the divinity. Everything finds its origin, its existence, its nature with it from God. And God directs everything according to its nature. We talked about that in the bulletin last week. But winds up being that he directs them all by their nature. But as St. Thomas points out, no creature in its nature returns to God except with others. It's an interaction with other creatures on this earth, whether it's the sun or the stars, the climate, other people, air pressure, whatever. Everything else that's created, it all is meant to coordinate back to lead the free creatures, men, angels, back to God. And so while at this moment we wind up looking within ourselves to see the miracles of God, the paralytic, our Lord focuses upon the fact of what is interiorly missing, your sins, you're forgiven, you're made whole interiorly. And of course, as we know, the Pharisees, the men who are present there, they start in their minds thinking, this guy is just blaspheming. This is desecration. Only God can forgive sins. Who is this rabbi? And of course, our Lord knows what they're thinking. And so he says to them, it must have been very strange for the people in the room. Because there's a conversation going on where you've only heard half of what's actually said. But our Lord should just look at other people and say, why are you thinking those things? And then go on very strangely to say, which is easier to say? You're worried about words. Which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven you or get up, take up this mat and walk. But so that you know that I have this authority we're told he turns to the man and says just that. Stand up, take up your cot, and walk. So while it's a physical healing, it's juxtaposed beside what is purely a physical healing of the leper, and one which in this with the paralytic focuses upon the interior healing. And then, of course, as I said, the following section of this gospel is the calling of Matthew, who becomes an apostle. But Matthew, as a tax collector uh, functionary for the Roman state, is considered a public sinner. So this man not only changes, removes from his life what causes the disorder within him, his sins, but he also winds up being called later on to become an apostle, to spread that word. And that's an important point to notice in our gospel today is that we are told what is the context that our Lord is performing this miracle with the paralytic. 
It's not about carpentry. It's not about the roof of the house of Peter being pulled apart. It's about teaching. And we're told that our Lord, everyone's crowded in. They've jammed in Simon's house. They're all crowding around the front door. And we're told that our Lord taught them the word, teaches them. And in that context, we start having pieces of mat and mud coming down upon everybody sitting in the crowd as they're punching and breaking the roof, the flat roof of Simon Peter to let this man down. So it's all a very strange scene. If you remember, the, the clumps of dirt and the matting that they're getting from breaking open a hole is falling on top of our Lord. And then this man is let down. And so when we look at these instances, it's very important for us to heal and to see what it is in our individual lives that we have to fix. That's why I said, it's, you know, I mentioned last week, this is a brilliant coup by God. Brilliant to our eyes. God, of course, is always in charge. So to us, it's a brilliant thing because he's made everyone do the great fast this year. Stop. Think about the fragility of your life. Think about all the undercurrent, right? We're always told there are people who have medical under problems. They have problems. They have concerns medically. Some of those problems just come with time. When they say it affects the aged, well, no one can change that. There's nothing to repent about. We just get old. But other people have underlying problems which are resulting from earlier decisions in their lives. And there, there's an aspect of repentance that has to be done. That aspect, when we look at our lives underlying, obesity is not one of the underlying problems directly with the question of this virus. But obesity is one of those indications of what's happening to us culturally and civilly. At the beginning of the 20th century, one in 10 adults was obese, which is okay, what you'd normally kind of expect. But now, we just had in the paper three weeks ago, is that 40% of the adult population in the United States is obese, which brings on everything else, the diabetes, cardiac problems, respiratory, you have all these other issues going on. These are choices that we make. And this isn't about obesity. It's about looking into our lives to know what we do within our lives which cause those holes and those malfunctioning of systems. That's what we talk about during the great fast of an examination of conscience. Which aspect of my life doesn't allow me to be patient? Which choices do I make in my life that doesn't make me truthful? Which aspects in my life are missing so that I think I can take things that don't belong to me? Which aspects of choices do I make in my life that I have an undercurrent, talk about a condition medically, the undercurrent of my desire to manipulate and make things happen the way I want them to happen? That's an underlying current of all of us because of original sin. Which is why in the bulletin this week we talk about prayer and the wisdom that we try to pursue. It isn't about making the world happen the way we want it to happen. That's not prayer. God is going to make the world happen exactly the way he wants it to happen. When we pray and we stand before the divine majesty, the primary thing that we are asking for in adoration, in thanksgiving, in reparation, because we know that we fall short of where we are meant to be today on the 22nd of March, 2020, that we know that we fall short in that reparation and the fourth aspect of prayer, the petition. But that first aspiration of adoration and thanksgiving to God is we ask for wisdom so that we can understand how it is that providence guides my individual life, guides the life of my family around me, guides my community, guides my nation, guides the planet, so that we come to understand the working in the hand of God behind these things. Again, our Lord could have healed this paralytic before they ever got to the roof of Simon's house. So why does he ask them, not explicitly verbally, but have them necessarily go and punch a roof in the house? Because it shows their trust and their confidence in this rabbi. Why does God make things difficult in my life? Not to hurt us 
but to make us exercise precisely those virtues which are necessary of wisdom and understanding and compassion and patience. We are witnessing a world which is going hysterical around us because it does not ask for wisdom. We can deal with things in a much more sane manner and be just as serious and at peace and calm. And so when we look at our Lord and to do this, remember that during Holy Week, on Wednesday night, the very climax in a sense, before we spend just the Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at the end of Holy Week and our Lord's Passion, on Wednesday night we have the lighting of the lamp. It is a healing ceremony. Through lighting of candles, through prayers, and the consecration of the oils which are there, and the people come up and we are anointed on our forehead. It is the lighting of the lamp is probably the Syriac version of what once was used as a form for our sacrament extreme unction, for the anointing of the sick. And so when we think already for the next two weeks to come up, let us look at our Lord's miracles, understand that he heals, but also to ask for the wisdom to understand that he exercises us in patience. And then we set our eyes to that moment at the end of the great fast for the sacrament, the sacramental, the mystery of the lighting of the lamp on Wednesday of Holy Week. And as we mentioned, all things being equal, we will be here, 6.30, Holy Week, that evening, to come before the Lord to ask to be made whole so that each of us can hear our Lord's voice say to us during these weeks of Lent, my child, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. <clears throat> We will continue on page 748 with the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten God to me. Consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, his entire life, the earth and air, and became them. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious Pilate. <coughs> Church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead. <coughs> of the world to come. <coughs>
The Lord reigns clothed in majesty. Lord in God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life in your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, St. Mary, St. Jude, and St. Charbel. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the repose of Edwin Labs, and for the intentions of the Catholic Extension Society and its donors. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. We continue with the anaphora of St. Peter, Chief of the Apostles, on page 774, 774. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Father, God of peace and order, security, we make us worthy to embrace one another with a sincere kiss in the spirit of your unending love that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. Peace, love, and faith, brothers and sisters, from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And may the God of peace be with us. Amen. O Lord, we bow before you to receive your blessings and assistance, for we are weak and you are the support and refuge of all. We raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, may the light of your face shine upon us, deliver us from every evil, and blot out all our transgressions, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, 
and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. Is Truly, it is right and just to glorify and exalt you, O Maker of all creation. With the angels, we glorify you, and with voices of praise. We cry out and we proclaim. of your love for us you sent your son into the world and he became flesh of the virgin mary for our salvation and them saying, each time you celebrate these holy mysteries, you remember my death and resurrection until I come again. And as we await your second coming, we offer you praise and ask you. On the day when you will judge the righteous and sinners, do not condemn us because of our sins, but have compassion and mercy upon us. Turn your holy face away from our sins and assist us. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, As we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we profess our faith in you, we ask you. Have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us and hear us. Anin Murio, Anin Murio. Anni Murio, Nitemo Rojo Hail Kadisho, Ona 
since he may make this bread the body of Christ our God Amen. and make the mixture in this chalice the blood of Christ our God Amen. may those who share in these holy mysteries be cleansed body and soul from every sin and receive eternal life O Lord, accept our intercessions and our prayers and grant security to your people and peace to your flock. Protect our shepherds, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, and Gregory John, our Bishop. Assist the priests, the deacons, and all those who serve your Holy Church so that they may intercede and pray to you on our behalf. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, those who have asked us to pray for them, those who desired but were unable to make an offering, and those who assist your holy church. Be a shelter and a refuge for them, for you are the Savior of all. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the civil leaders in our country and throughout the world. Enlighten their consciences to bring security and peace to your people. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the Holy Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, Saint Joseph, Saint Marin, and all the saints. Assist us through their prayers, and make us worthy of their reward. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the righteous fathers and teachers who have gone to their rest among the saints. Remember those who diligently carried your gospel throughout the whole world, and confirmed your holy church in the true faith. Assist us through their prayers and strengthen us in your love. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We remember, O Lord, our parents, brothers, and sisters, teachers, and all the faithful departed here and everywhere who have gone to their rest. Forgive us and forgive them of all sins and offenses. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin. We hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant us, O God, to depart and forgive us as we have with our wonderful Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was in the shall be Lord, 
You are the pleasing oblation who offered your son for us. You are the high priest who offered yourself to the Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. For your mercy, may our prayer and our life by instances, which you offer to the Father for you, to you be glory. O God the Father, you strengthen and encourage us, for we are weak. We implore you to purify us from every sin and to accept our offering, so that in one spirit we may call upon you praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom of God and the glory are yours. Amen. O Lord, lead us not into the trials of temptation that we do not have the strength to overcome, but deliver us from every evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. O oh Lord, bless your worshippers who bow before you and implore you. Make them worthy of your mercy and forgive all their sins. For you are almighty and rich in compassion. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy love, and our souls purified by your forgiving love. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for our new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory
Thank you, O oh Lord, who raised glory to you, giving us your body to meet in your living blood, O oh love of all people, have in your
We thank you, O oh Father, for this gift that you have given us, though we are unworthy. Do not shame us because of our sins, but help and save us. That we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. Lord Jesus, stretch forth your right hand and bless your people. Protect them by your holy cross and be their shelter and refuge, and perfect them with your abundant blessings, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your blessed Father, and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. <clears throat> so again, it is a pleasure to see you here. May the good one keep you healthy and safe. And since everything's being done online these days, I give you your online assignment. You can Google, there is a Saint Corona. She does actually exist. Her remains are in southern Italy. But the only reason why I mention her, she has no relation to the virus, of course. And the name Corona just means crown. It's the equivalent of Stephanie. Stephanie, Corona are the same names. The reason why I mention is because she was a second century Syrian martyr who was killed in the church of Antioch along being buried with a soldier of the Roman army called Victor. So there is a Saint Victor and a Saint Corona buried in southern Italy. They're in Italy because the Venetians had a habit of raiding shrines in the Middle East and taking the relics back to Italy. That's why she's buried, her remains are in Italy. But she was the wife of a soldier. I'll leave you that. You can find out how she was actually executed. Saint Corona, keep us all safe. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen.